So we're working on an ACIS system on Toyota, a uh, 3.0 liter V6. 3.0 liter was made from, I don't know, what was it, 93 or so? 93 to around 03, 05 ish. Yeah, depending on the U.S. market. And then in foreign countries, it went a little later than that, I think. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so they come in Lexus, Toyotas, etc. Um, so. This is the ACIS system. It's, a, it's an acoustic control con induction induction system. system. So it's similar to like a uh, almost like a I want to say like a ram air type deal, where it's, it's it sort of lets more air into the intake at a certain RPM range when you're giving it throttle or when you need instant throttle response. And it's responsible for helping you get a smoother acceleration, but yet distribute the horsepower or mid-range or low-end horsepower where you need it and maybe possibly interstate highway uh, freeway acceleration now, it's, res it's responsible for a lot of things probably fuel economy everything and most people don't know but their ACS ACIS system or their acoustic system is not working properly well here's an example this is a diaphragm out of one and here's the kicker you can't get these anymore they're discontinued uh, from Toyota can by themselves. And you can't buy these by themselves. You have to change the whole assembly, which is this whole assembly on the side of your intake. And it connect. This rod connects here. It bolts here. And this is called the uh, actuator, which is just a diaphragm. And so to, to see if yours is working, disconnect your little vacuum hose here on your diaphragm. Hook an external hose and give it a little suction. In this case, I got nothing. I must have big holes inside of here. Because it's supposed to retract with vacuum to open that induction. So, <clears throat> since we couldn't find anywhere on the open market, anywhere on the internet, eBay, anywhere, all we could find was whole intake systems. We didn't know if these, these were any good. The actuators. So, we, bought, we picked these actuators up from the junkyard. We picked up two different ones. We tested them. Before we bought them. I bought two of them because I, you know they only cost me nine bucks for this a piece of trim and a and a and I just grabbed a, a, relay. a relay for the hell of it. So I'm gonna test this one. So that retracts fine with vacuum. Now what I want to do is this is what you want to do you want to suck vacuum in and, and hold the line. If you have a vacuum gauge, it's easier. I mean, this is easier than a vacuum gauge to me. Let's see if it holds. See if it doesn't slowly let out. Okay, that one's holding. Let's see if this one does any better. This one looks a little newer. It's only supposed to get momentary vacuum from yeah. what I remember. Right. But if this is bad, this will cause a vacuum leak in your vehicle. In this case, this one's much better. It took... a little less... and it held longer. Oh, look. That one's bleeding down slowly. So this one's slightly bad. It's got like a small leak in it in the diaphragm. This one does not. That's not what it This came off a Toyota Avalon with a V6. And this came off of a Camry, like a 96 or something, 97. Also had a V6, though. Yeah, it was long since it's a, a, a 1MZ FE V6. It's a non-VVTI system. With a non-VVTI system. Uh, but then they have the VVTI version. They also use this acoustic. But it's a different diaphragm. It's a different diaphragm. It's a plastic diaphragm. I don't think you can get your hands on that either. But they're not like Lexuses and stuff. So, this is a good thing to check. Uh, because heat gets so hot underneath this engine. That's the reason for the sludge problem. Because there's so much heat inside the engine compartment. Uh, you could open this hood 30 minutes later and you still got intense heat inside this engine compartment. You can imagine these diaphragms probably melt on the inside 
and they just go bad. So it comes off with a little snap clip on the back and two Phillips head screws, but you can't get to it easy with a screwdriver. So what I did was set me up something on a ratchet with a number three Phillips head to get to it. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put this new one on and we'll, we'll cut the video after we install the two screws. We'll cut the video and then we'll test it and show how when you rev the throttle it sucks vacuum through this port here. I got capped off with a screw. It'll suck, we'll change this vacuum line too. It'll suck vacuum and open this induction to distribute, distribute your horsepower accurately. Sort of like a, uh, I don't know, like a non-turbo turbocharger, like a, like a, uh, like a horsepower distributor or like a Ram Air system. This is Toyota's version of that, of like a Ram Air system. Forced induction, forced air induction sort of. It lets it breathe uh, better for horsepower and fuel economy at the same time. Alright, so we got this on. We're putting the Phillips screws number threes. Number three Phillips, that's bigger than a standard Phillips screwdriver. In case you don't know what number three means. Putting it on in the same place it came off, the old one came off. Tightening it down. And Toyota recommends uh, when you replace this, you replace this whole deal right here and the gasket behind it. But the uh, problem is that's not really necessary. Especially since you can't get these anymore. I mean, you can find one or two on Toyota's website for 300 bucks. The whole system. Yeah. You got to buy this whole system here. It just goes slides in. It's got a little... It's got a little flap inside of here. You clean it. You can find it on different forms. So let's let's see if it's opening now. Again, I know we all, we know we already tested the diaphragm, but let's see if it has enough strength to open it. Get a good piece of hose on there. Perfect. adjustment screw right Man, there. You, you guys probably have no idea whether this system is actually working on your vehicle or not unless you get out, have a buddy watch under the hood, and rub your gas pedal up. Give it give it throttle. Raise it up to about four or five thousand RPMs real quick. Wrap it and see if this thing opens. Or get out and vacuum test it manually with you with a piece of vacuum hose. Suck the vacuum hose and see if it works. You guys gotta check that. And I know some of you have disabled this device. I don't know if it's helping your fuel economy, it's hurting it or raising your horsepower. But I know if this is the way Toyota came factory, they did it for a reason because they wanted to build this engine with, I believe, as much performance as they could get out of it, or at least get down there close to it. So that's that. Now we'll give it a shot, test it, test it, and see if it runs any better. We'll keep these two old ones. And we visit the junkyard since they're so cheap. We didn't tell the junkyard what they were because they have no idea. Most of the people over there, we told them it was a, a vacuum actuator. That's it, actually. Because that's what it is. It could be for a carburetor. It could be for a choke system. It could be for a... Uh, uh, an old carbureted engine could be for anything. So we bought it like that. You let me know. Yeah. All right. certain times when the when vacuum is opening up to it. Midway when you hit the gas, as it's on its incline, it opens up temporarily and then closes real quick. Yeah, it opens all the way and then closes real quick. That's how it's supposed to. Part of the service manual, that's how it's supposed to work.
I will put the G-Tech on this car and see if we can get any more G-Force out of it. So from, from experience and it's quick test drop, I, uh, I have to say that the purpose of that, that acoustic air, etc., etc., opening, it opens from 1,000 RPMs to a quick rev. In other words, when you, it's for quick throttle response. So when you, when you quickly wrap the throttle, it opens up fully. I haven't taken it on an interstate yet, but there's a noticeable whole shot difference, what I call a whole shot. In other words, it's, the take, it's faster on a takeoff, out the hole. Um, it's got a little bit more horsepower when you, when you stomp the gas pedal to, to either get over, to downshift, or to accelerate from a dead stop, taking off from a stop sign on a red light. So it's more inclined to, to spin the tires or give you more G-force at a at a off the line start so that 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 is what it, it has accomplished since we've never had it working before we bought the vehicle without it working we did not know it was not working until we started testing each individual vacuum modulator vacuum uh, control and uh, different diaphragms we checking the EGR we checked that and that was giving us a vacuum leak on quick acceleration. AC on. Yeah, that made a difference. <laughs>